Uh, and so fast forward to today, where's Claros right now in terms of its evolution as a company? You know what, it, it, it changes depending on the day you ask me. That's how fast it is right now. I, I feel like uh, we just had a board meeting the other day, uh, yesterday actually, and the materials were sent out a week ago and I found myself in the board meeting apologizing because we had had significant updates since the materials were sent out yeah. a week ago. So that's my preface to saying what I'm telling you now, uh, there might be further updates before the podcast airs. Uh, we are right now in the stage of going from, uh, we've got our, our product, our MVP. It's more than a minimally viable product. Uh, we've got our PFOS, destruction solution. You know, it's the reactor with all of the peripherals that go with it, uh, that hit the performance goals that the industries need uh, flow wise, economics wise, performance wise. We've got those systems developed. Uh, we've got many pilots now with the big companies under our belts. Uh, and we're moving right now from pilot uh, execution to commercial scale. Uh, this year and into next year. So this this is, I would say, one of the biggest inflection points in the company to date is what we're living right now. Um, our main customers are industrial. That's our sweet spot first uh, application market segment. It's these big makers of PFAS and the big user industries of PFAS. You know, your textiles, your healthcare, your semiconductor, oil and gas those companies where those facilities are running 24 seven making PFAS and or using it in applications. And so where we are is, you know, we're now in with uh, over, I say over 10 of the top 12 biggest PFAS makers in the world because we're right at the cusp of converting number 11. Uh, and then we've got many, many large user of PFAS customers. And so we're piloting in their facilities right now in Europe, Japan, and the United States. And then for some of those companies, um, for example, one of the two largest PFAS makers in the world that's one of our lead customers, we're in the process of the final pilot that optimizes the actual system that they will then commercially implement that we're on track to implement with them early next year. And, and how, how big a market is this? What are we talking about? just within the United States alone for PFAS remediation, just the remediation. So not the consulting services or any the peripherals, uh, well over 200 billion. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, I've heard, you know, globally, I've heard the, the trillion dollar thrown around, yeah. the trillion dollar number thrown around, you know, in terms of the size of the problem as well, right? Yes. Yes. And trillion is an interesting word too, because also that's one of the, I think, the hardest things about, uh, getting people to understand this issue because when you're talking about parts per trillion, it just kind of rolls off the tongue, but parts per trillion really means like basically one drop of something within like 20, 30 Olympic sized pools, right? I mean, it's, right. it's very, very small, you know, amounts we're talking about. Right, right. right. So you're talking about an issue that's very hard to see, very hard to imagine, but with massive economic impacts and repercussions. Totally correct. And with limited information out there. Right. So once again, I'll bring it back to this theme around PFAS 14,000 different ones, long, short and ultra short. You know, in Europe, they are very aware of all the way down to the ultra short. And so when they do analytical to determine, hey, what's in that water, what's in that soil, because my food is coming from that soil, they're testing in parts per trillion the long, the short, and the ultra short, because that's on their radar screen. That's how they define PFAS. We in the United States, when we test, we're not necessarily testing for all 14,000, right? We're testing for the ones that we define as PFAS, right? right? And so you've got what's best and what you're looking at from an industrial situation, and you've got what's best for us as consumers. Right. What's best for us as consumers is to have the same level of awareness as Europe. Right. As we're analytically testing for that one drop of PFAS, you know, parts per trillion in 30 Olympic sized swimming pools. If that's directly correlated to being very hazardous to my health, I want that to be accurate. 
And I want to know not just if I have long chain in my drinking water or my soil food source. I want to know if I have short and ultra short, right? Um, that's where analytical testing becomes really important. And so we at Claros like to say that, that if you look at, have we reached the tipping point in PFAS remediation, in the, the demand for knowing this isn't a problem, it's gonna go away, and that destruction is the solution of choice. One of the best leading health indicators of, of this market is analytical. It's because you can't even wrap your head around destroying something that you can't even detect. Mm -hmm.